allons commencer, je vais appeler Jacob Stinson et Liu O'Neill to come on stage. And Jacob and Liu are going to introduce us to their artworks that they've been uh, working collaboratively on. And uh, um, I'll let them introduce themselves and uh, introduce their artworks. Uh, some of you are familiar with their works because it was created uh, partially for Luma Foundation here in Arles. And uh, Jacob and I spent quite a lot of time here in Arles to talk during the pandemic times. It was supposed to be a short residency and then I think it was extended for almost a year. Uh, so he's a familiar face now in, um, in this city. So over to you guys. Thank you. So thank you, Fabian. It's so nice to be here to be presenting this uh, project. Let's see if we can get a screen up. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm an artist. My name is Jacob. And uh, you want to say who you are? My name is Lou. <laughs> and uh, so we will be talking about this project that was commissioned by an art foundation called LAS in Berlin last summer. Uh, there were nine different collaborators involved in this artwork, and Lou is like a key, amazing sound artist and collaborator on this, based in Marseille. Um, and of course, not all of us can be here um, right now. But first, I want to kind of give an idea of, of where this project started, where it originates. So for the past 10 years, I've um, looked to develop a way of collaborating with practitioners from different disciplines. So, you know, like sound artists like Lou, but also game designers. And my own background is making video games as well. Um, but also poets, um, yeah, composers, singers, and especially I've been working with natural historians and field biologists. So I've been kind of slowly building out a way of working almost like making instruments. That has kind of been the idea. And this is what uh, Lou has also worked uh, together with me and the other collaborators on is creating an instrument, an instrument into which you can create compositions, and, but not just in sound, but in like ideas, in perspectives, and bring everything into a rhythm. So rhythm have been key for this project Bell Bell, and one that I created for Luma Foundation that opened last summer called Liminal Lands, um, because rhythm is like a way where, you know, the planet has a rhythm, your mood has a rhythm, um, different species have different rhythms, and by working with rhythm rather than like an object or only a space, you can create oscillations where things can vanish and disappear. Different elements and different vibrations, species, people can kind of be brought into os oscillation. And with LAS, we did this project called Bal Bal and Backhine last summer, and it's kind of the culmination of this way of working. So now we have an, an instrument into which we can uh, include a, mu a multiplicity of perspectives. Um, but the first step towards it uh, was a VR work that I made with Luma Al last year. I started it about three years ago first. So I lived in Al for almost a year. And I was out working in the Camargue and the Salon du Chiro wetland um, every single day. And I worked with a biologist, Patrick Gallard, who spent 35 years of his life understanding the rhythm of the soil of the landscape. So I, I kind of learned to, you know, he borrowed his eyes, his way of seeing and perceiving the landscape. Uh, and from that, we created a virtual reality kind of instrument. So four people enter the work together, and then they sink into the soil, and their movement influence the sound of the experience in the landscape. Um, and it creates this whole, yeah, kind of poetic morphing, um, world that you're part of. So this was in virtual reality, but then, uh, yeah. And so to create the work, it, it's a lot of like field work in the landscape, uh, like digitizing sound and different objects. It's like, it's a lot of, it's months spent, you know, with my body or with collaborators in, a, in an environment to digitize elements and then put those into these instruments. So they kind of like start to have a movement. Uh, and this is for Bell Bell. It was like, a, Another, so one key collaborator also is a friend of mine in Brooklyn, Matt McCorgle. He makes all the sound of the Natural History Archive in Berlin. Um, and he went out and together we like recorded different uh, species 
and elements and sounds from the ecosystem. And there's also a singer uh, called Aka that was invited to sing different verses. There's an artist, Pan Dai Jing, that did like an opera performance inside of the, of the work. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a bit of how the artwork is created. It's like you go from digitizing these elements and then you get these, you know, the virtual scans. And then we also work with Natural History Archive. So typical for, the, for my project and this one, Balbal, is a combination of like species, sounds, words, songs from the past, also from the present, and mixing these together into this kind of instrument. Um, and yeah, we also work with, you know, like different scales, so from plants to soil to an entire landscape to insects, that's like a multiplicity of, of scales and life forms. So this is what it looks like, and we'll play a video in a second. But it's basically a way of going from, like what I made with Luma and Liminal Lands was in virtual reality, people enter the instrument, and now with Lou and uh, another programmer, Wouter, he's, he's in, in Belgium, uh, we found a way of connecting like a game engine, like the real-time system, and using network technology to to sound in space using like natural echo. So what you're not seeing here is this kind of sound element that's moving through the space. Um, so I will play a video. Uh, if we can turn down the light. Oh, <laughs> wait, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play two videos and then um, we can talk about the sound with with uh, with Lou the the sound system. You first build a landscape. You build a simulation in 3D that exists even when you turn off the screen. There's this virtual environment that's pulsating and it's changing. And then other people can enter that and create within it. The screens are little doorways. They're little guiding points through the exhibition that navigate you through it. And what you see virtually sends signals to all the sounds. So the sounds is like dynamically changing as you see the virtual world changing. Berlin, in the past, was referred to as Berl. And Berl is an old Slavic word that literally means swamp. So I've been exploring and digging into the past landscapes, the past ecologies, but also lost songs, mythologies, and emotions around what it means to exist and be within a wetland and a swamp. Okay, so I'll play one more video. Um, so that's how, what it looked like in this nightclub of Berghain in Berlin. Um, but what is it, what I've been kind of and, and you know building is a is a way of spatializing the a virtual world on top of a building. So I'll just show the next one. Um, so you can see what it looks like like in another form of architecture. Uh, this yes okay. Oh. Uh, I have to make this full screen. Oh my god. Uh, 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 <laughs> mm. uh, sorry. I, I don't have a Mac. Um. Okay.
Can we have light on? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, mm, where is it, Fabian? <laughs> uh. Okay, cool. So, yeah, these are like two different types of buildings the work shows in. Um, you can like occupy different floors, different uh, types of spaces. Um, and uh, Lou, so uh, I, you know, I, we've, we've uh, started to work together a lot since this project. And uh, it's been yeah, really interesting. Maybe you can, you want to talk about the kind of the instrument and the technology? Sure. Um, so just a brief note on like w um, which sort of perspective I'm coming at this from. Like I'm, uh, I'm a composer and sound designer. I mostly work in composition and sound design, but with like specific focus on generative composition and spatial composition. So generative means like kind of taking in uh, unexpected and dynamic processes into the composition process rather than just scripting the composition and spatial meaning essentially mapping sounds onto uh, architectural spaces or other spaces. But um, uh, yeah, what was kind of like particularly new for me w here was the, the link with the game engine, which is something I hadn't really explored before. And that was like really exciting in terms of generative composition because basically, I mean, we had to figure a lot of stuff out because we weren't using sort of uh, pre-determined models, but um, we sort of created this protocol for uh, being able to share information between the game engine in which this was built and the kind of composition uh, sort of sound systems that I that I uh, work on. Um, and yeah, what was so interesting about this project is like the density. There was so much in terms of like rhythm, as as you describe, like dynamics, information, all this, which can be channeled into uh, generative composition. Um, so yeah, basically over time we sort of developed this kind of new protocol for sharing information between a game engine and uh, a sound system. Um, uh, Wouter was a key component in person in, in, in doing this. Just uh, uh, Wouter is sort of a, how do you describe, he's like kind of the, the, the technical side of the visual engine for this. Um, and we sort of created a new language in a sense uh, which was used for kind of essentially communicating information from the visual to the audio. Yeah, so it's very interesting, like, uh, to give some context to that, like, what is happening is um, building a system with uh, multiple people where no one person can can create it on their own. So it's like, that's the, that's like the total world, you know, everything you see on the screens, then there's the this kind of instrument that Lou is programming. Um, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to get back to, to get to this slide, so um, uh, I suppose what this shows is like the, the sort of, the, the relationship is between the sound system and, and the, uh, what, what you see on the screens is that the sound system is just constantly listening to, to what's happening at that moment on the screens. Nothing repeats twice constantly being rendered, so the sound system just has to be completely adaptable and open to any sort of changes that are happening all the time. So basically there's just like various forms of um, dynamics and information that are constantly passing from the, the game engine to various sound processes. And this is kind of where we combine different people's involvement. So there's uh, Arca, uh, Matt McCorkle, who are, who you both, you mentioned both of them. Um, Basically, it's like a different um, elements all kind of combining together in a sort of a dynamic generative sound system. Um, and then we sort of create uh, like a spatial narrative for it. In a sense, we, we, we map the, the composition, not just to time, but also to the architecture. So um, especially with, with Arca, who becomes like a kind of a very present character in the installation, she sort of navigates the space. Um, uh, you don't see her, but you can kind of hear her moving around the space from one part to another. So in a sense, it's like the, the space becomes an important aspect of the composition. So it, her, her song doesn't just unfold over time, but it also kind of unfolds through space. So then as a visitor, you kind of become part of it because as you walk through the space, your, your, your body is essentially becoming a, 
an agent in the composition because you sort of experience it differently depending on where you are. Yes, and uh, like um, each little corner we work with, uh, like this other artist that's also on it, <coughs> Matt McCorkle, like in Verkhein, work with um, like impulse response. So it's like each little corner of the room has calculated its natural echo. So the different sounds take this into account. So like when Arca is singing, for example, it occupies the whole building. You can hear it all over the place. But then these smaller sounds, like each screen has sounds connected to them. And it depends exactly on what you're seeing than what you're hearing. And so to make this, we had to work with so many different people that we had to make a language in order to communicate. Because again, there's like, like Wouter is this network programmer I work with. So he's like a very traditionally trained video game developer who then comes in and then he programs how visuals in the three-dimensional world can connect to an entirely different technology that Lou works in, in like Max and, uh, and Spat. Uh, yeah, so the sound system is mostly built in Max MSP and uh, uh, one of the kind of modules which is used for it is the uh, SPAT, which is kind of an open source set of library uh, created at IHCAM in Paris, um, yeah, which is an important part of like the spatialization aspect of it. Yeah, so then the, this kind of question of, in order to collaborate with people who have very different forms of expertise, work in different technologies, have different you know, ideas about what constitutes a meaningful experience in artwork, you need to create a kind of a language and a protocol. So in this instance, um, uh, I work with another artist, Den Sutherland's in, in the UK. And he uh, wrote a PhD, and part of it is on the cultural history of swamps. So in order to communicate between the different tools, the different technologies, and different people, we created like a language of mythology. So as things are changing in the artwork, like it's fully real-time, generative, it never repeats itself. There's a library of like 200 so sounds from the environments that Matt recorded in the landscape, but also from Natural History Archives. There's like 20 different songs from Aka, and the system is mixing all this depending on what happens in the virtual world. So in order to execute this meaningfully, uh, we came up with like making verses. So Balbal -Bal has seven verses and each verse is based on a different actual song and folklore from the past. So we started like naming things. And maybe you can speak about what it was like working with me, Vauda, and trying to figure out how to name, 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 name things in the system. Sure. Um, yeah, so in a way there's lots of, uh, the kind of sound system has lots of different layers of different types of sounds. Um, and then it's sort of different, uh, as you said, like verses, which are basically kind of related to the the, the narrative that unfolds of so different, different um, uh, let's say, spaces that you access in the swamp, some of them quite uh, metaphysical, some of them more physical, and each one sort of has a whole new, <coughs> brings, a, around, brings about like a whole new sound world as well. So in the end, you end up with like a big sort of, uh, um, you know, what could be a sp spreadsheet, but in, 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 in our case, it's more of a, it w I suppose it's done a bit more poetically where the mythologies of the world uh, that's being built kind of come into this sort of uh, convention of understanding and differentiating these different sound worlds. Um, and then basically, I suppose in the dynamics that are kind of rendered into the, the Unreal Engine system, um, uh, a lot of the sort of the, 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 the mythology is already kind of present there and we sort of channel that as essentially like information from the, the visual system. Um, so we kind of had to, yeah, like come, come up with sort of a, a system to uh, uh, find a way for that mythology to kind of be synchronized from, from the visual to the audio with a kind of a naming convention, I suppose. Yeah, so for example, in the work, like what we're seeing right now would be a frozen, f the, basically the genitalia of a frozen fern in kind of a warm evening. So these are variables, and there's a high mythology variable in the work right now. So the work, the virtual world itself, you know, like the virtual is basically invisible to us unless we attach it to a device for our senses. Like it's just zeros and ones, it's nothing. So it's like in order to make the virtual perceptual, you know, you work with language. So the idea was to like 
Basically, there are different variables in the work. One is the language of science and mythology. So it will sound and look different depending if it's now digging into the realm of the collaborations we did with field biologists in the Natural History Museum, or if it's diving into the realm of like mythology and folklore about swamps and wetlands. And it also influenced like if Aka is singing or not. Like Aka can sing like a, a cathedral, like a traditional, more like a Christian singing or like a shaman. So it like oscillates all these different combinations of things. And that basically meant we had to create categories of language in order to collaborate with multiple different people. And then it also means that when the artwork is showing in an exhibition, it's like you press play and none of all the like nine people it took to make this can tell you exactly uh, what's gonna happen because it's like, uh, it's evolving uh, like that. So yeah, that was like a kind of an exploration of working with code as more like poetry and, and, uh, and mythology. So literally when we were working together with the different, like with Lou and Bowder, the game engine programmer, uh, we were literally si sitting with like actual spreadsheets and like saying, oh, now we are in, now we're by the fern in the evening at this time, uh, okay, how do we get Mada Aka to sing to that? So then it's like we take pictures and then we call it the frozen fern world, but there's also like an underbog. There is like a world tree. There are different worlds that we had to name from all the material that was collected in order to collaborate. And then uh, I would write little stories and send pictures to Aka, for example. And then I would re we, or we would receive back Every sp and it kind of uh, an improvisation to that, and then the same to Matt, this other sound artist. And then it goes into the instrument technology, and then back into the game engine, and back into the building. Um, so it was a very, yeah, like swampy way of working. Um, and I think it would be nice to end then with the kind of final component of it, which is, um, it's also it intended to be like a stage. So it's a way of creating these pulsating orchestral um, installations, uh, but actual singers and performers can actually interact with it, and it can take uh, input from the outside. So inside of background, we also did a performance with another artist, Pan Dai Jing, who then worked with a opera singer. Um, do you remember her name? Eva uh, Davidson, Anna? I think. Uh, Anna. I forget her surname, but Anna. Anna Davidson, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just play that quick to give an idea what that kind of looks like. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Number three. Yeah. So, okay, from the beginning. So it's like a live opera singer interacting with the work. So, what what I what what I find really interesting there is the the kind of the technology of the human body in a sense, where someone can train their voice and just posture their lungs and compete compete with this entire technological apparatus. Just the raw body can really. It has sensory ways of, you know, expressing ourselves in the world that I think are, that we are starting. It's not just species that are going extinct, but also ways of expression. So, okay, I'll just I'll just play it. And Short clip. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.